Hey friend, are you searching for a podcast that partners faith and entrepreneurship? A toolkit of tactical how-tos to start or grow your online business God's way? Hop over and check out The Stephanie Gash Show, a top 0.5% podcast for women who are ready to create impact and income without sacrificing family or their faith. Listen in to over 500 episodes on biblical business training, clarity on your niche, podcasting, monetizing, and so much more. That's S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E-G-A-S-S, The Stephanie Gass Show. I pray it blesses you. Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. You can learn it and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get it done, you can get the show notes and more at drleewarren.podbean.com. That's drleewarren.podbean.com, and if you'd like the show, please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. Good morning, my friend. I hope you're doing well. It's about four o'clock in the morning. Pray for me and my patients today, if you will, and my team. And We'll be praying for you, too. Don't forget the prayer wall, wleewarnandb.com slash prayers, where we go to connect with and for people all over the world who need prayer. And we can you can put your prayer requests there anonymously or with your name or even just privately for me and Lisa and Tata. If you're new around here, the prayer wall is a great place to connect to this incredible community. And the other piece of it is wleewarnandb.com slash newsletter. If you're not getting my newsletter... It's really an important adjunct to the podcast. It's every week I give you my best prescriptions for how you can change your mind and change your life. The newsletter is important. It's also where you find out about new stuff, things I'm giving to you, uh, programs that are coming, the book that's coming out, all the information to connect this community. This is a great group of people from 77 countries around the world and all 50 states of the United States that gather around the idea of letting God teach us how to do self-brain surgery to change our minds and change our lives and really get after where we are getting sort of right about who we are, real about what we want, and clear about how to get there. Today I've got self-brain surgery tip number 30 for you. Now I skipped. If you're paying attention, you'll recognize that I skipped number 29. That's just because it's not thematically right for right now. We'll bring it back to you later. Self-brain surgery tip number 30. If you haven't heard these before, I did 31 self-brain surgery tips on Twitter several months ago over the course of a month or two. And I'm going to put them all together in a super post on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at some point. But for the meantime, I've been just doing little short um, podcast episodes around these ideas. And self-brain surgery tip number 30 is uh, relevant right now because I'm reading a book that's kind of blowing my mind. Um, and I'll set that up for you in a minute. So th- this, this self-brain surgery tip is it's kind of a loosely connected idea that I had as I woke up this morning. Excuse me, I sneezed again. I'm just allergies are driving me nuts right now. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go ahead and clip out the sneeze so you don't hear it because it'll blow your ears up. But uh, just forgive me, my voice is not quite what it should be, but I'm going to give you this brand new episode anyway because this idea is kind of coalescing in my head that connects my self-brain surgery tip number 30 to this book, Run With The Horses, by Eugene Peterson that I've been reading. And yesterday I played you the interview from Mark Brogap that we did a while back about his book, Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy, which is about lament. So I've got these three ideas kind of, kind of twisting around in my brain like a Rubik's Cube. And when I woke up this morning, all the colors seem to be lined up. And I, I just want to give you this. I think there's some more meat we can put on this these bones later and maybe do a full-length episode. But for now, just, just stay with me for a minute in my crazy brain at 4 o'clock in the morning and see if this is helpful to you. Here's self-brain surgery tip number 30. If you aren't happy where you are, you won't be happy wherever you are. That doesn't mean you don't make changes when needed, 
You don't think the change is the only thing keeping you from happiness because wherever you go, you're going to be there. Let me read that again. If you aren't happy where you are, you won't be happy wherever you are. That doesn't mean you don't make changes when needed, but don't think the change is the only thing keeping you from happiness because wherever you go, my friend, you're going to be there. So here's the truth. If you think that something or some person or some future event or some amount of money or some promotion at work or some pat on the back or becoming a New York Times bestseller or getting a scholarship to play football somewhere, if you think that's the thing that's finally going to make you happy, well, guess what? When you get that thing, the target will move and you won't be happy because the unhappiness is inside of you. It's not because of what you're going through or what you're waiting for or what somebody else is doing that's the truth now let me let me just give you that okay if you're not happy where you are you won't be happy wherever you are and now let me give you this yesterday i played you mark grogap's interview and mark defined lament in this way let me let me just play this little bit of what he said lament was about lament is the language of sorrow in the bible uh, i define it in the book as a prayer in pain that leads to trust it doesn't reconcile trust and trauma. It just holds them in parallel. That you can still trust and call to mind the goodness of God even while you're dealing with very difficult circumstances. Okay, so Mark says, lament is a prayer offered in pain that leads to trust. And if we're gonna kind of loosely define trust as hope, okay, so the, the, the idea that we're gonna believe that something good can come of this, we're gonna believe that God's gonna get us through it, we're gonna believe that things can be better they are than they are right now. If, if, if we can learn to pray into our pain, if we can learn to, to pray and, and just kind of give those things to God and say, acknowledging the situation that I'm in, I still wanna be hopeful, I still wanna trust that your other promises are true, that your promises are true, that you have a plan for me, right? Well, the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament kind of fleshes out this whole idea. The situation is dire. It's bad. The people have been exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. So the Babylonians have come and they had this incredible tactic when they wanted to take a city or a country, they would go in and they would basically grab all the people of influence, all the, the politicians, the leaders, the, the wealthy people, the artists, the, the, the people who had influence. Today it would be all the Instagram influencers, right? And the, the big TikTokers that would come grab all of them and drag them out and they would take them off to some other place and make them become slaves, basically. And the people left behind would be more, in their theory, the people left behind would be easier to manage. They, they would listen to the the local dictator that the, that Babylon put in place, or they would obey the rules because they'd be afraid to get dragged off to Babylon if they didn't do what they were told. So the, so the people in exile were bummed out because they were dragged out of their homes and sent off to the desert to do manual labor, and they, they lost all their status, and, and they, were, they were shoved off into a new life that they didn't ask for and didn't want. And the people left behind were, you know, robbed of their status, they lost their leaders, they, they lost some of their privilege, they didn't have the same freedoms, and so they were, they were kind of hosed too so nobody was okay in the situation or that they didn't think they were okay that they were turned upside down but but they were still alive right so you had people exiled to babylon had people left behind in both camps kind of felt like they got the shaft, okay? Well, Eugene Peterson wrote this book in the late, in the 80s called Run With the Horses, The Quest for Life at Its Best. That's that's what Jeremiah is about. So in, in that title came from a, a passage in Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5, when God says to Jeremiah, he says, if you're worn out in this foot race with men, what makes you think you can race against horses? If you're worn out in the foot race with men, what makes you think you can race against horses? Kind of reminds me of the proverb. I think it's 2410. Don't hold me to that. I'll look it up. Um, if you falter in times of trouble, how small was your strength? If you falter in times of trouble, how small was your strength? Jeremiah, God says to Jeremiah, if you're worn out in this foot race with men, how are you ever going to run with horses? Like what we want in our life is to, to run with the horses, right? To be free, to ski down the mountain, to, to, to do the things that make us uh, excited. We want to, we want to have this life that's free and, and, and abundant, right? And, and God says, okay, if you want that, but you're beat up by these silly people that are doing crazy things around you and you're worn out and you're stressed out and you're tired. How do you think you're ever going to have the stamina to run with horses? Okay. Now, let me tell you about 
what Jared, what uh, Eugene Peterson wrote about exile, and this is how I'm going to tie it back to the self brain surgery tip I just said to you a while ago. There was a group of prophets that were making money, but they were in exile with the people, and they were making money by getting the people to focus on how miserable they were. They basically were riling up the people's um, dissatisfaction. They were they were constantly convincing people that they ought to be really mad about where they were, that they ought to be really unhappy, that, that this was unjust and this was unfair and those people shouldn't have done that to me and they should respect who I am. And I'm sorry my voice is cracking up a little bit. kind of reminds me about what we're seeing these days in our society, right? You got all these fractions, all these factions of people saying, well, your group is, is, is being affected by, by systemic Injustice, and your group is being overlooked, and and they're not paying enough attention to you, and they've been uh, mean to you, and you uh, ought to be ashamed of your privilege, and they're they're just beating up people and keeping everybody divided and keeping everybody focused on circumstances that they're going through, right? So you had these religious leaders that were that were riling up the people, getting them to focus on what they used to have or what they wish they had, and and not on what situation they were actually in. Well, then God calls Jeremiah to do something different. God calls Jeremiah to come and and tell the people that He had a different idea for them. And here's what He said: This is the message from God of the angel armies, Israel's God, to all the exiles I've taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. Here's what God says to you. Build houses and make yourselves at home. Put in gardens and eat what grows in that country. Marry and have children. Work for the country's welfare. Pray for Babylon's well-being. Don't let all those so-called preachers and know-it-alls who are all over the place take you in with their lies. Do you get that? God is saying to the people, okay, you, you don't like it. You didn't want to be here. You didn't intend to be here. You're in a place you don't like with people you don't like in a situation you don't like. Babylonian exile is not your choice, but that's where you are. And you're going to be there for a while. So live in it while you're there. Build yourself a house and live in it. Make yourself at home. You're not camping. You're here. They drug you off and this is where you are now. That's what he's saying. So live while you're in the situation you're in. Marry, have children, make yourselves at home. He says, even pray for your country. Pray for the new place. Pray for the leaders. Maybe new leaders will come with a better heart and and they'll start to turn things around. If things go well for Babylon, God says, things will go well for you. Shalom, which means peace, wholeness. He's saying basically... Guess what? You didn't want to be in this place. Quit sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. The aim of the person of faith is not to be as comfortable as possible, but to live as deeply and thoroughly as possible. Eugene Peterson says, The aim of the person of faith is not to be as comfortable as possible, but to live as deeply and thoroughly as possible, to deal with the reality of life, to discover truth, to create beauty, to act out love. And guess what, he says to the people, you weren't doing that when you lived in Jerusalem. You were griping and complaining about what you had there. And that's why I brought it back to my self-brain surgery tip. I said, if you're not happy where you are, you won't be happy wherever you are. Doesn't mean you don't make changes. The people were never instructed not to wish to get to go back to Jerusalem someday. They were never instructed not to long for their homeland. God never said, don't hope, don't work towards trying to get back and resurrect. He said, in fact, resurrect your old life. Then the way you get there, though, is by getting right with God, by getting the reasons that we put you in exile fixed, the, the sin problems that you had, and get all that fixed and squared away. But while you're doing that, live your life. Hey friend, are you searching for a podcast that partners faith and entrepreneurship? A toolkit of tactical how-tos to start or grow your online business God's way? Hop over and check out The Stephanie Gass Show, a top 0.5% podcast for women who are ready to create impact and income without sacrificing family or their faith. Listen in to over 500 episodes on biblical business training, clarity on your niche, podcasting, monetizing, and so much more. That's S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E-G-A-S-S, The Stephanie Gass Show. I pray it blesses you. 
It doesn't mean you don't make changes when needed, but don't think that the change is the thing keeping you from happiness. So they had this idea that those prophets were telling them, if we could just get back to Jerusalem, everything will be okay. But they forgot that everything wasn't okay when they were in Jerusalem to begin with. They were sinning. They didn't trust God. They weren't obeying the promises. They were not happy. They were un, they were they had discontent in their lives. And this goes all the way back to the to the desert when they were led out of Egypt the first time. They were grappling within a few days of God delivering them from slavery. They were grappling about not having food to eat that they liked. They were they were tired. They they didn't like having to walk. They were complaining about this and that. And God gave them manna and even the manna. They got sick of that. And then he gave them quail and got mad about that. They were just never happy. So here, you know, years later, they're, they're exiled out of Jerusalem. They're grappling about being in Babylon. They don't like where they are. And God says, hey, you know what? I'm trying to show you you've never been content anywhere. If you're not happy where you are, you won't be happy wherever you are, friend. And so, like I said, this is tip of the iceberg with this book, Eugene Peterson's book. But here's something else he said, and I'm going to bring this back to Mark Rogap. So when we talk about how to live and have a quality of life whenever we're going through something hard, you've got a brain tumor, and you, you have a, now you have a, an expiration date on your life. You know that your life is going to probably be taken by this disease. You still have to live. You still need to have a quality of life. You still need to write a story that your family can connect to. You still need to, to leave behind a legacy that your kids can say, you know what, my, my mom faced into that hard thing, and she showed me how to deal with trouble. My my grandpa fought World War II, and he didn't give up, and he came home, and he struggled, but he always fought for hope. My mom did that thing. My dad did that thing. My sister pressed into that hard time. That's a better story than I got a bad diagnosis, and I got opened a bottle of whiskey, and I drank myself into oblivion, and I you know, just, just poured out my life into that bottle and died of my disease. That's a bad story. The good story is I find out something hard and I decide I'm going to press in. I'm going to fix relationships. I'm going to get closer to God. I'm going to leave behind a legacy that says, you know what? When you face something hard, you live harder and you, and you push through it and you make people make your life a good story. That's what we want. So here's where we go. Eugene Peterson said it this way. He said it this way. Hope commits us to actions that connect us with God's promises. Hope commits us to actions that connect us with God's promises. Now, I said it this way in my book, Hope is the First Dose, and I've told you this. Hope is a verb. Hope is not something you do. You sit around and wish that it was different. He was telling the people in, in Babylon exile, Babylonian exile, don't just sit around, work, build houses, live your life, pray for the king. You know, pray that, we'll rest- that God will restore this, but, pr- but live your life while you're there. Don't forget to be alive while you're alive, right? Shine your light. Hope commits us to actions that connect us with God's promises. I said hope is a verb, and the component parts of, the, of, of hope are memory and movement. You remember that God's gotten you through things hard before. He's gotten you through tough situations before. He's helped you deal with things, and you're still alive drawing breath to complain about where you are now. So that means God got you through the, the previous stuff. But also movement. You decide you're going to do something. You're going to take action. You're going to build a house. You're going to move forward. You're going to vote. You're going to pray. You're going to, you know, build the build the thing. And you're going to do something while you're waiting. You're not going to sit around and pine for the way it used to be or the way you wish it was. Hope commits us to actions that connect us with God's promises. Right? Mark Rogab said, Lament is a prayer offered in pain that leads to trust. And he said it perfectly. Trust and hope and lament do not get rid of pain. They run on a parallel track so that you can say, yes, I'm hurting, but yes, God is still working. Yes, I don't like this exile. Yes, I don't like this small town. Yes, I don't like this situation I'm in. Yes, I don't like this diagnosis, but the parallel track, God is still working. His promises are still true. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plan to give you hope and a future. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. God uses everything for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. All those tracks, all those things are true and they're running parallel to the other train track of the pain that you're in. Hope commits us to actions that connect with God's promises. 
Friend, if you're not happy where you are, you won't be happy wherever you are. That doesn't mean you don't make changes when needed, but don't think that change is the only thing keeping you from happiness because wherever you go, you're going to be there. Eugene Peterson's book, um, Run With the Horses, you can get it on Amazon or from your local booksellers. I think it would be a great Bible study for you. It's not very long. It's written in Peterson's. He's the guy that translated the message the version of the Bible. Great common language translation. It really helps you see the, the picture of what's happening in the story. It's not the only translation you should use because it's more, it's almost, a, it's not a paraphrase exactly, but but it's, it's just, it's just another way to read the scripture. So read Jeremiah in the Bible and your translation that you're used to and that you like and read it in parallel. You can go to Bible Gateway or the Bible app and put two versions up at the same time. Read the message too and see how Peterson translated it and you get the story coming alive a little bit and it becomes something more than just than just an Old Testament book about a prophet. It's, it's, it's how you learn how to run with the horses. And I'm going to play you Tommy Walker's song, Standing on the Promises. It's from his new album, Generation Hymns 3. We played it recently, but I think it just kind of flows with this brain surgery tip and all these ideas. So, again, I'm sorry for this sort of stream of consciousness this morning, but, friend, I just I woke up with this Rubik's Cube finally clicking into place that, that this idea of being happy wherever you are, but simultaneously working for something that you feel called to that's better or bigger or or restorative or writing a different story with with the things that have happened to you all of that happening at the same time and i remembered mark rogap's comments about the two parallel train tracks of, of pain and promise and, and how you if you want to move forward and you want to kind of get to the place where you can be okay no matter what's happening you've got to realize that you're not running on one wheel you're not just in lament you're not just in pain you are also traveling down the track of god's promises and that's why eugene peterson's little phrase hope commits us to actions that connect us with god's promises and my hope is a verb composed of memory and movement those all are coming together for me and and I'm, i wish i had i may have to write another book because i didn't put that and hope is the first dose but but this is important stuff and the reason it's important friend my dear friend, is because if you aren't happy where you are, you won't be happy wherever you are. doesn't mean you don't make changes when you need to, but don't think that change is the only thing keeping you from happiness because wherever you go, you're going to be there. And you, my friend, need to start today.
Let's sing it like this. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. That's patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron only episodes, and more. And partners like you allow us to stay ad free and keep growing. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Dot com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery. Dr. Lee Warren. Substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarnmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.